it's a pleasure to share with you today the findings um, from our from our study um, which we did uh, at the local level so um, first I will provide an overview of the project then I will proceed to the findings um, of my case uh, which is summer or western summer my colleagues will then follow and present their key findings and after that, I will provide some general recommendations, although they may also have specific recommendations based on the cases they examined. We'd like to thank Dr. Reyes for providing a good overview of the importance of looking into efforts that promote um, F1KD or, or first 1,000 days. So we will be focusing now on the findings of the study. So the study examined uh, various key factors that influence the delivery of programs and services related to ECCD F1 KD or early child uh, early childhood uh, development uh, first 1000 days outcomes in the localities. Um, as mentioned earlier, uh, this study was commissioned by the UNICEF. So um, the areas of focus um, that UNICEF um, was interested in, which we looked at. Um, are or were policy, leadership, and governance first, and then second, programs and services delivery, and, and then nurturing care practices of parents and caregivers of young children. But we also look into contextual factors. So for policy, leadership, and governance, we examined um, LGU's prioritization, planning process, their financing. We also look into the aspects of monitoring and evaluation. And we also examined local leaders' awareness, interests, and commitment to F1KD. For the delivery of programs and services, we examined the roster of programs at the LGU level. And then we also look at the inputs and processes under the building blocks of nurturing care system. And these are the roles and structures, human resource, the, the processes of implementation, health facilities, equipment, and supplies and information and communication. Aside from um, policy uh, governance and then program uh, implementation, we also gathered information about the prevailing knowledge, beliefs, preferences, and practices of parents and caregivers with respect to the nurturing care components, which are good health, adequate nutrition, responsive caregiving, opportunities for learning, and security and safety. So this is the scope of our study. We studied the cases of Northern Samar, Samar and Zamboanga del Norte through the municipalities that we have shown here. So for instance, uh, for Northern Samar, we examined the case of Catarman and Lope de Vega. For Samar or Western Samar, we examined two cities, Calbayog City and Catbalogan City. And for Zamboanga del Norte, we examined um, the specific cases of Sindangan and Leon Pastigo. As you can see, the LGUs we visited vary by capacity and resources as proxied by their income class. The malnutrition situation also varies as shown by different rates of stunting. And so this diversity in the study cases um, was important for us to gain greater understanding of the situation in these areas. Next, please. For our main approach for gathering data, we uh, we conducted focus group discussions and key informant interviews, and these were the persons or officials uh, whom we interacted with based on the discussion themes that we had. For policy directions, um, resources, and m and &E, we talked to the leaders or the local chief executives um, and the policy makers. For the services and programs um, implemented in the areas, we interviewed uh, program managers, um, implementers and frontline workers and for the nurturing care practices um, and access to services we talk to parents and caregivers in the areas next please we also used um, administrative data from these lgus and also we, we use their records and monitoring systems and we basically did qualitative analysis next please now for the key findings in summer, um, but let me just first acknowledge the, the other members of the summer team, uh, Mr. Carlos Caballero and Ms. Bles Mendez. Next, please. We examined the cases of Calbayig City and Catbalogan City in, in summer. And um, this is because we, we see variation in the performances of these two cities with respect to stunting prevalence, income class, and land area. 
So Kalbayog City is a huge city. Um, they said it's the third largest city in the country. It's a first class city, um, but it has relatively higher stunting rate um, based on 2017 data. Katbalogan City, meanwhile, um, is a fifth class city with relatively low stunting rate um, based on, again, 2017 data and a relatively smaller area than, uh, or a significantly smaller area uh, than Kalbayog City. Next, please. So these are the maps um, of the two cities. Um, on the right, we we can see Katbalogan's map showing the concentration of population near the Bay Area or near towards the left side of the, of the map. It also has some island barangays there. And then on the left side is Kalbayog City, which is, with its relatively dispersed population, which um, says a lot um, about difficulty of reaching all people uh, in the area. And both of these cities, um, Katbalogan and Kalbayog cities, um, they have uh, GIDAS or geographically isolated and, and disadvantaged areas. For the results in terms of policy, leadership, and governance. Okay, so the LGUs prioritize to some extent health and nutrition and allocate funds um, to its programs. But um, this did not comprise, or these do not comprise the top priorities, which are usually um, infrastructure related. These are based on um, on insights or, or opinions of the people we we have interviewed. It is very challenging also to objectively assess where ECC the F1 KD is in sectoral priorities because the resources that go into the implementation of such programs are lumped with various um, aspects. For instance, the F1 KD. Um, Resources are lumped in the in the health um, in the city health office, uh, and then, for instance, if you provide if they provide like supplies or advocacy programs under F1 KD, these are lumped um, with the overall um, budget of or expenditures in supplies and advocacy. So it's there, it's it's really it's really difficult to sort of separate how much is going um, to F1 KD efforts. But we can we can see and we have seen in the in our study that there is now greater focus on nutrition. Um, there are so many um, active uh, people working on nutrition on the ground. Next, please. We just want to show you here the increasing trend of health health expenditures in Katbalogan City. And next, please. And this is also the case uh, for Kal Kalbayog City. Next, please. We also found that. Um, the support of the LCE or the local chief executive is very crucial in getting programs like um, F1KD funded uh, and implemented. And um, however, while different sectoral committees and barangays prepare, deliberate, and carry out uh, consultations to determine the programs, projects, and activities, the upper hand on which programs are included and funded rests on the local chief executive. Also, while there is some awareness on the extent of malnutrition problem among leaders, the level of perception um, that we gathered um, on the average is not to the level that merits urgency and high priority in the local government agenda. So when we ask them and um, about uh, how important, for instance, F1KD is or how, how important mal the malnutrition problem is, they would say that, yes, it is, it's, it's, um, it's a problem, but when you look at when you ask them uh, about their priorities, um, it's not on, on the top of the agenda. In terms of planning, um, we found that ECC, the F1KD planning is fragmented um, with quite um, with, with little integration. And when we talk to the officials, they would say that usually the problem is about lack of time. And uh, um, I think this, uh, this warrants further examination. We also found that different agencies conduct their own internal planning and targeting. So their inputs are usually gathered and developed into the plan or the, the, the city nutrition action plan. And we found that among the cases that we've looked at, the quality of LNAP or the local nutrition action plan also varies. We also found that the level of interaction among members of the, of the nutrition committee at the local level also varies um, across areas. There are those which have regular meetings, but there are also those which um, rarely, if at all, meet to discuss the CNAP. So the general process is that um, they, the, the, the person in charge of, of putting up the CNAP is that um, he or she will just go around 
the units of the, of the local government and then get their their programs their nutrition related programs and they would they would just be consolidated into just uh, into the cena but they don't um sort of meet together and talk about their integrated efforts in terms of financing there is definitely lack of resources that go into um, into the financing of eccd f1 kd um, for instance for conducting feeding programs equipment and supplies and we have we have found this or we have uh, seen this through um, them not meeting their targets for for instance in terms of number of children that they're going to to cater and they're going to to feed in their feeding programs and also in terms of their lack of equipment and supplies in their opt or operation timbang um, um, processes or operations we also gathered that there are significant bottlenecks in procurement and this inhibits swift response to the needs of mothers and their young children in terms of addressing malnutrition and when we examine this more deeply the, their problem really is in even in cities for instance in in the in those areas that we looked at there are difficulties of looking at of looking into uh, adequate numbers of suppliers um the suppliers would not want supply without uh, first uh, being paid so um and their some of their problems also are in terms of for instance their back um the their bids and awards uh committees um who um do not meet regular regularly in, in a in a in a manner that is quite frequent that they can be reached whenever they're needed in terms of monitoring and evaluation, um, the main tool or data used by the local level um, are the OPT results. I, I know that, that they also use other sort of um, monitoring systems, but the main tool that they use for that um, are the OPT um, data that they gather. However, there is the issue of timeliness in terms of the OPT results. Um, the, the process of the OPT takes um, at least eight months to complete um, that process, and then the BNS and the BHWs uh, who are working on these OPTs, they're in need of basic training or retraining. So when we talk to the, the midwives, they say that, oh, the BNS, they, they need to be retrained every time there's an OPT operation. At the same time, they also lack the equipment, the anthropometric, anthropometric equipment. They also lack computers, for instance, um, they just use one computer for encoding all the data um, from the different um, barangays and there's just one person doing all the encoding. So very few, oh, very few of them are computer literate. There's also the issue of data quality. Um, the equipment uh, or tools that they use um, are not similar or not standard. Others use different methods of getting the weight of children. And also there's this um, issue with the OPT coverage. Um, so even if um, they're, they're saying that they, this is the coverage, sometimes the problem is, are they really reaching all, all the children? Or later on, um, Dr. Abrigo will also discuss about um, the problem of the denominator in the OPT. Next, please. OK, so um, a crucial deficiency um, that we found is really the lack of m and &E. And the lack of capacity for m and &E or monitoring and evaluation. They do implement programs. Um, when we um, when we did this study, we found really that local governments they really do a lot. They do do things and they conduct programs. However, they rarely or they do not really closely monitor um, the what they're doing, uh, whether they are getting the goals or they are meeting the targets that they've set or whether they have targets at all. So they just keep on doing things and um, there are, we found a lot of efforts that they do. However, they do not really monitor them. And so I think this is uh, one of the, the key deficiencies that we found in this, this study. And yeah, there are um, there were assessments. There's the OPT, there are information um, from meetings um, with PNS. They, that's how they, they monitor things. They often conduct these meetings. Um, however, uh, it's also it's also a problem when you don't get the accomplishments reports right away uh, from different agencies, and so that is the the problem in terms of really sort of improving your efforts if you're not monitoring them and, and if you don't know 
whether they're working or not, then that's that's really a problem. And for instance, for, for the CNAO or the, the City Nutrition Action Officers, MNE for them is very challenging because uh, being a CNAO is merely a designation, which means that it's an additional job um, to uh, an already overworked um, an, um, staff or, or officer. So, for instance, in one of the cities, the CNAO is um, a medical officer who is also overseeing a blood a blood bank. And so to go to the 157 barangays um, of that city is really, is really something. So he, the, the, the load is really heavy. And so m and &E is, is, is not really the, the priority there. In terms of organizational structure, um, the organizational structure for nutrition varies by locality. Others are more fragmented than others. Um, sometimes when the intention is to have greater focus, um, nagkakaroon ng fragmentation. So program components are spearheaded by different units. So um, same component are, are implemented by different units. For instance, BNS and BHWs, they report to different program leaders, but they're working on the same um, program. And with fragmentation, coordination problems are more likely. So it, it would be very important to set or set protocols or standards. And um, yeah, so setting standards and protocols is challenging when there is a lot of fragmentation in the system. The structure of local nutrition committees vary across LGU. So one has more sort of balanced representation than the other. So for instance, in another case, you would see that initial well distributed to members from the different units um, from the LGU. Like for instance, masyadong madaming people from, from one unit uh, compared to the other. And um, um, although um, although okay naman siya, but when, when, we, when we talk to people, it seems that Sabi nila hindi ata maganda because sometimes when they want sanitation officers there, um, iba yung nilalagay. So there are a lot of, of dynamics uh, going on in terms of the, the structure of the local nutrition committees. And uh, apart from, from that, um, there are also changes in structure um, during political transition. So the free, these frequent changes um, um, may adversely affect the long-term trajectory and sustainability of the programs. In terms of program and service delivery, we found that the, the F1KD is not yet formally institutionalized at the LGU level. So when we went there, um, it's still on the process of putting things together uh, para umusad yung program. Uh, at the barangay level, uh, we found that the, the, the barangay officials will not implement the program without um, um, uh, policy making at the local level. So kung walang local resolution yung LGU, hindi gagalaw yung, yung barangays. And um, so many of the programs and services related to it are publicly provided naman na in the community as part of separate programs on maternal and child health, family planning, early child uh, early child care and development and nutrition among others. So. Even if the F1KD, the, the Lord, the F1KD itself is not yet, uh, formally institutionalized at the local level, many of its components um, are already running um, for, for many years. In terms of the F1KD checklist, um, we found that some programs that ought to be implemented are still not being um, implemented. So, for instance, Kat Balogan. Um, um, is not monitoring many of the components. Um, in Katbalogan, the, the, the programs that are not yet um, implemented are nutrition counseling and provision of nutritious food and meals for mothers and counseling to parents, caregivers on responsive care and stimulation for infants um, and children. Sa Kalbayog naman, um, these are the, the, the programs that are not yet implemented, the, the PHIC or the field health enrollment and linkages to community based health workers and volunteers. For both Kat Kalbayog and Kat Balogan, um, they're still not implementing the lactation breaks for women in the workplace, which is implemented only um, in a few instances. And then the provision of lactation stations in the workplace and the organization of breastfeeding support group in workplace. 
So for those um, who are not aware um, of the ECCD um, F1 KD checklist, there is a long list of of things that the local governments must uh, must implement. But then, um, although as I've said earlier, uh, many of the components of the programs have already been or are already running for many many years, um, there are still part of the, the checklist that there they are still that they are yet to implement in the future. One of the opportunities or one of the positive um, findings that we got, um, at least for the summer, is that uh, the collaborative efforts were found to be promising um, and they present opportunities for better implementation in the ground. So there is cooperation among the departments, um, albeit at varying levels. And um, when we when I say when I say collaborative efforts, what they do is that when they go to a certain barangay that they tar they've targeted, for instance, for 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 feeding program, they also talk to the different units like the veterinary, um, the veterinarian, the city veterinarian, the sanitary officer, and then these um, these units they would uh, come together in that same area and provide different um, services. Like they would provide seedlings, and then they would provide some some livestock to the families of the the malnourished children. So I think in that area. Um, there, there is, uh, there are a lot of opportunities. Um, however, as I've mentioned earlier, the problem is in the planning. We don't know really um, what happened to the seedling, or we don't know what happened to the livestock um, that they prov provided to the family. So, it really, it's really down to the MNE also and to the planning. In terms of human resources, um, public health workers, um, as as you may know already, and and as is the case in other other parts of the country, it's scarce um, relative to the workload, and most are in need of further um, capacity building or retraining. And when we, we and when we ask them in which particular aspect do they need a retraining, it's in the infant and young child uh, feeding and in terms of the nutritional assessment. As I've mentioned earlier, the CNAOs are over overburdened um, with multiple roles. And also, midwives are overburdened. Also, and um, we examined um, the the assignment of population for midwives. So what we did here is that we just looked at the di different barangays um, assigned to the midwives, and then we just like sum the population for for each mid midwife, for instance. Um, so if this midwife is assigned to this cluster of, of barangays and um, how many people are there. So we, we just sort of played around it and we found that um, there are a lot of, 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 of unevenness. So um, yung iba meron silang kinikilar na 10,000, yung iba 1,000. And when we, when we validated this with um, people uh, from the area, from the, from the um, staff or from the officials in the LGUs, we found that this is because um, Yes, 1,000 na yung kinikator nito, pero this is a gida and the other one is, um, it's a, it's a, a city proper and then people have access to other like health providers. And so that is um, sort of, of okay, um, but then it would be good for them to also closely examine um, any further um, efforts to sort of improve the distribution. And also um, we found that um, frontline workers are also need retraining on OPT and also interpersonal communication. We also found uh, when we examined the clusters of barangays, so for each uh, barangay health station, there is a cluster of barangays that this BHS uh, caters to or serves. And then we, we just sort of colored the clusters with the same color. And then we found that um, some clustering of barangays may need to be re-examined, and this is the case for LGUs that have a wide land area and, and LGUs that have uh, geographically um, geographic constraints such as, as Calbayog City, for instance. So when you look at this map, there are there are like neon green na naka, naka, naka hiwalay from the rest and uh, when we when we asked them why is this um and we were thinking um, amongst ourselves maybe there's a mountain there and it this is uh, this cluster is more more sort of accessible than that but um we we talked to them and we said they may need to re-examine the assignments um in terms of clustering uh, of the barangay so that we will not uh, we 
we would be uh, we we help our midwives in terms of catering to these people because if you if the midwife is going from here and there and that would be very uh, difficult for them. Next, please. In terms of accessibility facilities, supplies, um, and information and communication, we found that people in Gida are, are in disadvantage. In one case, uh, we found that no midwives are assigned in some Gidas um, with no regular volunteers in these areas um, because uh, these areas are not organized due to problems of, of security and conflict. Um, and there's really significant geographic constraints. So when we ask them how how far are these or how difficult to reach these areas, and one um, interviewee told us that uh, he would need like six hours um, one way to go on foot to these areas. Like these are not these are not reachable by um, by vehicles. Um, in another case, um, we found that midwives are able to serve the the Gida areas, and I think this is down to the the variation in terms of reachability of the areas. But we definitely found that there is lack of barangay health stations. Um, many, many barangay health stations are concentrated in population areas. We also found that there are delays in supplies and we found that the short, short shelf life of nutrition supplies. So, for instance, um, when the supplies reach, for instance, the provincial office, it's, that it already has a remaining like shelf life of three or six months but then when you when you um when you factor in logistics going naman to the to the uh, barangay health stations pagdating doon konti na lang yung shelf life na natitira doon sa, sa mga supplies like sa nutrition supplies so that that's really uh, one of the problems in terms of communication with stakeholders um we know that, that there are various platforms are being utilized and this is something that that is um that is a positive sort of positive finding from the study in terms of nurturing care practices we we found that mothers are the primary caregiver uh, followed by the father and then the grandparents in summer um it was it was raised that they prefer um, the caregivers to be female regardless of relation as they feel women are better um, at providing nurture uh, to child and this is important this, this is an important information because when we want for instance to gather um we want to target people um in, in information and education campaigns it's it would be important to, to include not only the parents but also female members um, of the family does the study found also that parents have a profound understanding and definition of malnutrition uh, however, traditional beliefs um, exert strong um, influence on particular um, health and nutrition practices. With regards to pregnancy-related practices, it was found that some women do not immediately consult with health professionals. They tend to wait a bit longer, and their reason is that um, irregular yung kanilang monthly period. So one of them said, told me that um, she waited like five four or five months um, before she learned that she's pregnant because that, that's how irregular um, the, 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 the monthly period is. So in terms of, of um, raising awareness with this, I think it's very important that people in these areas really have to be, um, have to be sort of educated um, through various means, not just in schools, but also in a lot of, of, of platforms. Mothers show knowledge of practices uh, such as exclusive breastfeeding and signs of malnutrition. They are also aware of proper food uh, for their children, um, dependent on age, and they are also knowledgeable of the importance of neurological stimulation through reading and playing. In terms of childbirth, there has been an active efforts by LGU to encourage and incentivize mothers to give birth to their babies in hospitals and health centers. And breastfeeding is a widely accepted and performed practice in both LGUs uh, that we examined based on responses of, of FGD participants and the time frame um, of, of breastfeeding um, is um, from six months to three years. We also found that parents caregivers approve of immunization for their children and they adhere to the immunization schedules prescribed to their children. And parents under study claim that they had enough knowledge and skills to provide quality care for their babies. There are also social and behavioral problems, um, however, within the family. And some parents are into gambling and vices, which can affect the nutrition and well-being of the children. 
and then not all parents um uh, avail of avail or cooperate in government efforts to enhance nurturing practices and um, it's it's a pity that um kung sino pa yung poor uh, sila pa yung hindi nag cooperate and this is um and this is particularly the case of non four piece um parents and um interestingly no uh, the four piece um families they're really very cooperative because yun yung ginagamit ng, ng mga ng mga implementers so if you or if you not if you don't come to our um like information dissemination then you would lose your four piece um um grants um and so but then the problem is that if there are lots of poor um families who are not included in the four Ps, uh, that's a problem kasi hindi sila nakakasama. So, um, the, the the reason of the non-four Ps is that, oh, naman kami four Ps, bakit kami kasama? So, parang natatag yung, yung, yung four Ps as, as uh, sila lang yung pwedeng uh, mag-avail or sila lang yung pwedeng mag-participate. So, we, we also, uh, of course, found other contextual factors that are important. For instance, um, parents with insufficient incomes are unable to provide basic nutritional needs and other caring needs of their children. And this also limits time spent with children due to the extra work they must do to, to make ends meet. In terms of geographic um, isolation or geographical constraints, it is really difficult to provide services and personal in, in GIDA areas. And what is... Um, what is uh, problematic uh, when we when we uh, talk to people um, officials is that what what they did recently is that they target areas now based on number number of of children or number of malnourished children and no, no longer about um um uh, a proportion or or prevalence of malnutrition that means that they are focusing on population areas and they may be uh they they they're now they may now overlook um the cases of those who are in in geographic um, isolated areas and of course um armed conflict in some areas uh, definitely is a significant barrier in the provision of health and nutrition services so yung mga midwives they are scared of going into these areas because may nababalitaan sila na bupugutan ng ulo so ganun po ka ano so yun yung yun yung hirap uh, for for the midwives and the other and the other um health staff uh, to to reach these areas because of the problem of armed conflict um i think that would be for the summer uh, case thank you